This broadcast from IOF TV is brought to you by Tikator and Lumonite. That nice picture also on the uh, screen, uh, where you will also be able to follow. Hello and welcome to live so coverage all, from the European Interim Championship. Thank uh, you from Northern Italy. It is a sprint only a few days, and we're going to crown the new sprint European. We're starting today with the classic sprint individual sprint coming to you from so the Express town of Verona. They, uh, the athletes have already done the qualification uh, this morning. Fast and furious affair and then within just over 20 seconds of the winner to make it through to this final. It's only the top 15 men in each heat, the top 15 women in each heat to make it through to this afternoon's final. And it's going to be a, certainly an interesting one if this is a city full of tourists, many of those visiting places like Juliet's Balcony. You can see, though, the crisscross of these old streets, these old buildings, and that is what the athletes are going to be navigating in today. The arena is situated, as you saw, uh, next to this Roman amphitheatre. It's a great backdrop for some uh, racing today. It's going to be very, very fast and furious. Even this morning, the runners going underneath the expected winning times. And so it's, as you can see, it's very, very flat. You've got these narrow streets. You've got lots of tourists to contend with. Maybe something similar to what we saw in, in Riga in Latvia at those World Championships back in 2018. Uh, we're going to start with the men today. This is the statistics, so three and a half kilometers of running estimated winning time. It says 14 minutes there. We see on the final the, on the, the final bulletin, it was about 13 and a half minutes. And it's only a one minute start interval today. So as we get into the course, it's going to be really, really thick and fast with runners coming. But here is the course. Uh, Jonas is here. Uh, why don't you talk us through it? Mm -hmm. You can see that we have to start uh, very close to the theater you named before. A long leg to the first control. You see generally uh, big buildings. You see it's often about left or right. Uh, in the very beginning, you have quite a lot of time to get into the race. First, uh, pre-borning TV control at control three, then a few or the pre-borning at three and the TV split at control six. A few shorter controls there. Um, a long leg to eight, nine, and at control 10, they have a map flip. So they will flip the map and then, yeah, continue on the second loop. And uh, if we see it in general, it's a lot of left or right. It's often two different possibilities, but it's not the most difficult sprint we have seen in the World Cup. Uh, I'm sure we'll see that later on as well. It was kind of similar in the qualification. That's why we had so very, very tight races there. And uh, well, we have a few situations, of course, where it can differ between uh, the route choices, but I don't expect the differences to be very big. So it won't be a similar race as we have seen in uh, a few World Cup races where we always, all, almost had mazes to solve on the way. This one will be very fluent for the runners to execute it. But will be a lot of about winning two or three seconds on the left or the right or losing them if you take the wrong route choice. 
And here you so see the one... So do you want to talk through some of these three choices here? Yeah, you see the one to the second control, uh, something I mentioned here. You see it's you have these big, big blocks of houses, uh, very typical for this medieval or even the Roman uh, cities in Italy. And then, of course, you have left or right because there are no passages through. And you can see that here. Uh, a very good example for the characteristics of the course. Uh, now we are on the blue one. But then once you have decided, you can see it here, there are not so many choices to take. So once you have decided your route, it's, you really have to run fast and you shouldn't miss the moment from where you've decided to switch and really, really go fast because yeah, once once you have decided, you, there's no there's no other way, and there's nothing really to be too careful about here because there are no, not so many left and right turns. This one uh, of the legs where you have kind of a bit more passages in between. I think the big big challenge today will be, as you mentioned before, it's quite a similar situation as we had in 2018 in Latvia and Riga. There's so so many tourists out there, and the difficult thing today, even talking about the technique, is how to manage to read the map, uh, run through the tourists here. I mean. Uh, when it comes to coordination, map reading at the same time as you're running and execute the legs and keep like staying focused, uh, even though there are so many people, I think that's the really difficult part today. But I mean, a leg like this here, 1718, well, I mean, if you, if you choose the wrong route here, I think, I mean, left looks a bit uh, better to execute a bit uh, less aggressive edges to take uh, corners um, i think there's many things like this to look about but if you take the the, the other route choice it might differ one or two seconds So that is how we have it then. And we have the start list based on the qualification earlier on this morning. I think we're expecting it to be incredibly tight. So you're going to be talking there just about a couple of seconds on different route choices. That, I think, is, is what we might see the, the medals decided by today. Just a few seconds. And um, Jonas, this is always the point where we talk about the favourites. And maybe there are mm -hmm. some people who are going to start quite early here today who we want to count them in amongst the favourites, like Matthias Kibbutz, you see there. 28. Yeah, and I mean, that's uh, another indication that it's going to be very tight today and that the, the, the qualification this morning must have been quite easy to execute because uh, Kibbutz just made it to the final by 10 seconds. And if you missed, if you were more than, uh, I think, around 30 seconds behind, uh, you were outside the top 15 and so also outside the a final, the final today. Uh, talking about the favorites, of course, Kibbutz might be the biggest one among the early starters, but then there are so many good runners here. Uh, Yannick Michels, uh, maybe the one most specifically uh, preparing for these championships. Emil Svens, Kasper Fosser, uh, Swedish runners, Jonathan Gustafsson, uh, Asker Andrien had a very good qualification, then Ralph Street won the last World Cup race in sprints. So there's so many big names we can name here. Uh, and of course, the late starters, they did good in the qualification. They, they're on fire. They really are. Um, people who weren't on fire, though, we did have a few <laughs> surprises of people missing out. Uh, do you want to talk about the ones you, you picked up? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we had big names missing out uh, from the final. Daniel Hoopman missed uh, the final. Florian Howald as well from the Swiss team. Tim Robertson, Gustav Berryman, Max Peter Beimer. So quite, quite big names there missing out on the finals. Yeah, that's quite unusual. I think there's slightly fewer missed out from the the women's final, but they were 
you know, Tim Robertson was in 25th. He was 34 seconds behind the winner of his heat and he doesn't make it in by 10 places. It's insane mm. how many runners there are. You know, like the Swedish team had had nine men and nine women. They got seven of each through towards the final. Uh, Switzerland had eight men and eight women running. They're huge, huge teams here. It makes it really hard to qualify. Mm. And I mean, even if you looked at the split times of the qualification, I looked at the one from Gustav Barry who just missed out by one second and you look at the split times and you can't really see a big mistake there maybe a bad route at one control where he lost seven or eight seconds but of course i mean if you're just allowed to lose 30 seconds to the to the winner of the heat and you might not have the best day physically then well those seven eight seconds they might make the difference here yeah, well, Gustav Bergman said he felt technically good, but his physical shape wasn't where he wanted it to be. And he kind of said that wasn't really a surprise for him. So uh, evidently some uh, kind of training problems, maybe injury problems in the run up to this, as, as a lot of the orienteers are taking their big, big change from being in the forest to being in the sprint as a whole kind of uh outlook of the season just completely changes but here you can see there's a bit of a route choice to control number one this is Mattia de Batolis from Italy uh, going around these streets you can see just how uh, quick it is how flat it is and at least some of those are slightly uh, quieter streets here's an interesting name that only just made it through towards the final Wojtek Kral winning three World Cup sprints this time a little bit possibly pass his best at the moment but he's such a competent sprint orienteer bags of experience and he would hope mm -hmm. to do a bit better than his qualification results yeah definitely and I, I, I don't know i mean his shape this season hasn't been too good and in a race like today i wouldn't count him uh, even if he has won uh, at least one individual sprint and then of course knockout sprints before uh, i don't know if this race when it's going to be so physical will will suit him very well. I think he would have liked to have a more technical sprint today. So you can see the athletes kind of crossing through this car park that's been marked with a we have a darker symbol on the map, um, which is for either lots of tourists or lots of cars uh, like there. But you can see just crossing through the square to get to control number one. Not too many difficulties there. Timo Suter next to start from Switzerland It's quite a uh, a decent run out to the actual start control, which you can see just passing there uh, next to this arena. So it gives you, does give you a few meters to kind of set up the uh, the first route choice leg. Here is Aro Aho into the first TV control then. The actual split time taken at control number six. And he looks pretty good so far. In, not reading his map very much. You can kind of see that... Ooh, <laughs> he is, uh, I was going to say he's in control, but not when you're uh, going around corners like that. So that's the fifth control on the water feature. And we actually get the time at the sixth. So he's only the second athlete to make it to that point. And just those sequence of controls, that's quite typical of some of these, uh, some parts of this course, the sequence of controls, none of them are too tricky, but you've just got to try and keep your speed as high as you can on all of those. Catch up again with the drone shot out towards the first few controls. Here's Mattia Debatolis again now going on the sequence of controls to number six. This is the fourth one. And Jonas, how possible is it to, you know, to, to, to remember this whole sequence of controls at this part of the race? You can see a lot of these athletes are hardly looking at their maps. And here you can get a glimpse of how many people that they're out in the terrain, uh, not at every place, of course, you can see it when they enter the control here, it's quite a few, but the way he left before, 
there were quite many tourists. Oh, this is a very quick start. This is Team Sutter. Let's catch up with the next runner. It is mm -hmm. indeed. Has shown that he is quite good in sprint. He had a top 10, his first ever top 10 in the World Cup in Ceska Lipa. The last sprint race of the season. Or in the latest sprint race, of course. Looking pretty good through here. And we get the time at the next control that we should do. <laughs> Different way out to Wojtek Kral. I think that way out that he's gone this way is a, is shorter. It's, um, it's from the organizers. It looks like it's 21 meters shorter. Yeah, and it's definitely less. I mean, you, you named it before. There are different symbols on how many tourists that are expected out in the terrain. And it's definitely less distance running through the, let's call it, big crowds there. So I think it's a good decision. So our first look at split control number two. This is Havad Sandstad Eidsmo from Norway. And we take the split at control number you could, 12. You could hear his tactics. Everyone he was actually around. like shouting just before the corner in order to kind of uh, get the uh, tourists' attention to move out of the way. You can see it. He, you could hear it again. Yeah. Here. I, I mean, I would as well. well. Who was it who used to wear bells on their, on their legs? Was, uh, Morten Boström was it uh, i think back in 2013 now let's yeah 2013 when the world championships were in finland and he became the world champion i think he had these bells around uh, his legs and I, I can say it, it's quite a good thing but if you're running when he was running the sprint relays and stuff if you're running together with him in a group it was kind of annoying <laughs> Well, maybe you don't need it when you're in a group, but when you're doing an individual sprint like this, like uh, Francesco Mariani here, who we can see, then it's quite a good tactic. But it's going to quite, you know, use up a bit of energy and a bit of breath doing that. So Mariani, oh, uh, hasn't quite got the punch. You can just hear it there. Oh, quick that's start. really dangerous. <laughs> So, um, Aro Aho is the second to make it through to control number 14. And he is behind AIDS Mo at the moment. So, w one interesting thing that's been, that was said in the bulletin is that s there have been some kind of channels made um, on the way to some controls because of the tourists to kind of try and uh, funnel you through a certain route. They're not marked on the map at all. You just have the normal line between the controls on the map. But then you have this uh, this channel that's, that you kind of can run through. But the problem is you have no idea where the, when they're going to appear uh, on the course. Yeah, it's mostly to get around the corners like here, so that you don't uh, that no one shows up just after it. But uh, yeah, I mean the the channels then they're not on the closest way around the corner. So I think most of the runners, I don't know if they will use it. They will just cut the corner and hope for the best. No, the Batolis the third we've seen it through there in third place. Just 16 seconds is the gap. 
Uh, and we are good way around this course so far. Three and a half kilometers for the men. Is on the short side and it should be Wojciech Kral who we see through here next. He had a good start. The three times World Cup sprint champion. And I, is that whistles or something that, that I can hear as yeah, well? It could be the volunteers that actually try to get to the tourist attention as well. But because you can see it every time you get around the corner, if you really hit someone, then it can be very dangerous. So I think it's a good thing to try to avoid crashes here in the city, not only for the runners. Uh, I, think, I mean, they come with speed, but if, if there is an older person or a child or whatever, it can be really dangerous. So this is the start of Martin Regborn, who is just about to get his campaign underway. You can see he's, I don't think, taking the best route through there. Jürgen Backlid next up to split number one. And we go back, I think, to split two here. Oh, he uh, approached that control from a very different direction, maybe going straight out of the park and going around the other way. I'm not sure that was shorter at all, uh, that control. So Mariani, the leader, built the Italian on home soil. And our first finisher then, Havad Sansad Aidsmo. Aidsmo, the first finish in the European he will be the first one to complete this final and crosses the line. So 13 minutes and 18 seconds. My goodness me, it's going to be a quick one out there today. It's going to be a short one for the winners, I'm sure. He said three and a half minute, 13 and a half minute winning time. We've already gone under that. But let's not forget, I mean, uh, Hover Sandstad's eight move, maybe one of the best, or I mean, a very good sprinter. He was fourth in the World Championships last year. So I think this time can actually be be quite the tough one to beat throughout the course. But uh, yeah, let's see. We will wait and see indeed. So 13 minutes and 18 seconds at the moment. As we see the next athlete through this short sequence of controls towards control number six. But Harvard Sunset Aizmo pushing it the whole way around this course. And it's a very, very quick time. It's a great day for sprinting and maybe now's a good time to talk about kind of some of the preparation that the teams have put into this kind of race. You know, it's not, for most runners, it's not their main aim of the season, but for the sprint specialists, it probably is. And that means a lot of preparation. Yeah, of course. And the, I, I mean, after right after the World Championships, most of the teams, they switched over to sprint orienteering because as we all know, next year, we're going to have a sprint World Championship. So I think it's... I mean, it's, it might be easier to switch from forest to sprint anyway. So if you have those one or two month uh, preparation time, I think most of the, even the, the forest one, the runners, the runners that prepared very specifically for the world championships in Switzerland this year, uh, they could, they had time to switch back. And I think uh, we have quite many well-prepared runners on the starting line today. But then on the other hand, maybe they didn't go to the terrain here and prepare here. But if you have a sprint like this today, I, I don't know. It's it's not the most special one coming to the technique and execution of the run. So I think it's they will be all fine. Yes, Matthias Devatolis uh, coming in towards the finish now. And not going to take the lead it will be second place for the italian 29 seconds down and you can see that big lead at the moment by eight no it's very good this is, more interesting. This is a great role he was in the lead in the previous tv space it's going to go after so just over 13 minutes 13 minutes and four seconds of Wojtek kral in the lead I think that he actually did a mistake just uh, before the finish. 
uh, as I can see on the GPS, he missed the entrance to control 19. So I think he, he lost about 10, 15 seconds there. Okay, so potential. Big you can potential see it on the split as well. Uh, the time loss of about 10 seconds just before the finish. Start one of the favourites for today's race, starting pretty early. He's the reigning knockout champion, both world and European champs level. He is the new middle distance world champion. We'll see how Matthias Kibbert does. But his teammate, Timo Suta, just into joint second place then at the finish. I think we're going to see many athletes on the same times as well. Look, Catburn here. Very strong Frenchman. And he's got 15 seconds to go before he makes to, to, to still be in the lead at the sixth control. This is the fifth on this well. As you can see Martin Bregborn we haven't seen through there. He's had a good start. And maybe look, Catburn not quite as well prepared at that sixth control as some of the athletes. From one Frenchman to another, Guillaume Verove. This is on his way to the 14th control. to see here a lot of applause for him as he comes through that 14. This is Francesco Wasn't Mariani and I think mm -hmm. this is going to be tight here for the new leader. Has a few seconds left. Indeed, uh, two seconds ahead of eight smooth. So a good run for Mariani. And what's happened to Wojciech Kral? Uh, Is he mispunched? I, I can't find him in the result either. So we have to wait for some confirmation. Uh, but a very good run for Francesco Mariani. Even though yeah, just looking at the so live, he lost live results in the very end. Sorry. Sorry, I was going to say that Wojciech Kral does look to have mispunched. Um, looking at the live results, that does seem to be uh, what, what we've got on our screen. So I'll try and figure out where exactly that was. Johnny Crickmore, though, here at the start. Yeah, we have confirmed the mispunch from Wojciech Kral. So back behind Matthias Kibbert, what can he do? Mm -hmm. You can just hear and see how quickly he's moving his feet, just getting that speed up, the agility around all those corners as well. And this looks very, very good for Matthias Kibbert. After That's less indeed. than four minutes of racing, although that is a slightly longer route out to the next control hear very clearly the whistling of the volunteers just before the runner comes around the corner and i think i mean in a race like this it's definitely not a disadvantage to be one of the late starters because uh, i think that the spectators the the tourists in the city they start to learn uh, about this uh, event here and they might get to know when the runners come and understand what the whistling is but here you can see by the kral 
and uh, we see also yeah, why he's disqualified. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, it shows course, you that it's much faster to go though, like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, even though we've been saying it's 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 a kind of comparatively easier course when you're pushing it so hard, like these guys are, yep. and you know you have to be incredibly quick to be able to win this. You're going to make what are frankly stupid mistakes yeah. like that that you you I mean, shouldn't normally make. I mean, it's a yeah. It's we don't have to discuss it. It's a rather easy sprint, but I mean. Everyone knows about it, that the runners, they start to realize that they have to go to the very limit in order to be fast. And if you go to the very limit, I mean, mistakes like this can happen. You you push everything and you start to take risks and maybe you, you push it a bit too far at one point and then you miss out on the control. Yeah, it's going to be a, a game of just keeping it on the red line, keeping that fine line of pushing it hard enough and not making mistakes. You can back lead into fifth then, just seven seconds down, puts you into fifth place. So the Norwegian there. Move back to Ricardo Scalette, another of the Italians. They had a pretty good qualification, at least they did on the men's side of things. Three of their men getting through. None of the women made it into the final from the home team. And you can see Scalette knew exactly where he was going to go next. Within single figures of seconds. Interesting. Guillaume Berov on the way to the finish. And I think it's going to be a new best time. He's had a fantastic last part of his race and he does indeed go into the lead by seven seconds. And looking back at his splits, just kind of had a very, very good end where end of the course where maybe some others seem to struggle a bit. So that's very, very impressive. Silver medalist at the Junior World Championships in sprint this year. So definitely a very good sprinter, but it's, uh, of course, it's a big difference. Uh, between the European Championships and the Junior World Championships when it comes to the level of the other runners. But we do have a fair few kind of juniors who've actually made this final. I'm thinking of the women's uh, Rita Maramorosi, who's who's still to come, Jay Walk champion. It's, it really is a, y a young person's sport, I think, or it tends to be anyway. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, especially the sprint distance is kind of the the first, the easiest step to enter the kind of elite orienteering, the seniors orienteering, because I think, I mean, in the forest, there's so much advantage you have when it comes to routine. And I think in sprint, when you have a race like this, when it's mostly two decisions to take, then it's very similar. Uh, and, and maybe not a big difference, but let's take Martin, Martin Rijkman to the finish. Yeah, he's had an amazing run and this is going to be a huge gap here. So it goes 12 and a half minutes, 34 seconds ahead of Breivik and Martin Regborn. That is, at this point, a massive, massive lead. So looking very, very good for the Swede at the moment. As we watch Mikkels here, it's not as fast as Kibbert's. It's only six seconds out and he's not going to win any seconds back if he does things like that. Just not quite on top of things. And these mistakes that kind of almost hurt all the more because it's an easy course. Uh, these athletes are going to be kicking themselves if they make mistakes like that. So Matthias Kibbert's next. And he's on his way to the 14th control. We get the next time so that you can see all this street furniture around the cars and everything like that. He actually takes a different route into control number 14, different to those we've seen before. It is actually a shorter one. So I think really good there for Kibbert. We saw that massive lead by Regborn just there. Kibbert has gone faster though. So we wait and see what Kibbert can do at the finish. Those are the standings at split two. So the control we've just seen there is control number 14. And Matthias Kibbert's in the lead at the moment. Seven seconds ahead of the current leader at the finish, Martin Regborn. And a good mix of nations in there at that point. Lots of people in the mix. Here's Axel Granfist. Again, one of the less experienced of the Swedish team. But he is incredibly fast as well. You can see just how soon he's folding that map up 
getting a chance to see the course, that first expectations. You know, all of the teams will have been looking at the old maps. They might have made their own maps. They will have definitely also been uh, making their own courses. It's Pablo Frando from Spain crosses the line into the top 10 within a minute of the current leader. And there's runners left, right and centre. This is Cornelius Björk here from Norway. Changed his mind in the last second. It's a good job he did because he was going the wrong way out there. And when you're trying to keep the speed high, trying to read the map as little as possible to, in order to do that, then mistakes like that I think are going to creep in so we watch out for the next runner to come through this should be Adrien Delaine here he is but he was pre-warned in a great place, but it's dropped a little bit there. 10 seconds off the pace. And we should see Matthias Kibbert very soon towards yes. the finish, I think. We see, should see Florian Attinger first, I think, on the way to the finish. He had the second best time at the pre-warning. Hard to see. I don't, don't have anyone in the picture right now. This is Mats Eitzmu. So now we have the Florian Attinger in the finish uh, into second position, 18 seconds behind the Rekborn. <laughs> you see, many of the tourists try to go and look at the control to see what it is, and it, always in yes. that moment, there's a runner appearing. Yeah. yeah, you really don't want to do that at all. But Matt's eighth no tenth in the sprint of the Czech champs in the Czech uh, World Cup. Sorry, it's going to be very very tight between Kibbutz and Drakeborn. That's the pre-warning to the finish. There was only three seconds between the two of them. Here, Here he is. is, though. Here's Matthias Kibbutz. And you can see all the people cheering him in. He's, this is the last control, and surely this is going to be a new leading time. It looks good enough to take the lead for Matthew Skibbert. By how many seconds? We'll have to wait and see. It's going to be six seconds ahead of Martin Regborn. So 12 minutes and 26 seconds. Matthew Skibbert mm -hmm. in the lead, but for how long? Very, very good finish by Kibbutz. As I said, it was only three seconds. Uh, so he was running faster, quite, I mean, a few seconds faster on just the last meters compared to Riekborn. And uh, in, this, in a race like this, every second counts, of course. Here's Yannick Michels. That was the 14th control and losing time here. We saw that mistake that he made, where was that? It's control number six, uh, but not quite the high speed that he needs today. It's, gonna, it's a very short race. I wonder if somebody like Yannick would prefer it slightly longer. Here's Thomas Krifter, who's had a fantastic season. And we, I mean, we haven't seen so much uh, of the sprint skills of him. Of course, he was good in Cesc Lipa as well. But uh, kind of, he had such a big breakthrough this season. It will be very interesting to see him now in a championship race uh, in the sprint discipline as well. Timo Polsini. You 
can see the, the tourists kind of hide, almost hiding there. I don't know if they're cheering on the athletes or trying to pick a good time to actually go through that archway. And we follow, look for the next athlete through Emil Svensk. Yeah. It's like a good start for Svensk as well. Let's take him to the TV control. Seconds down, he is the defending champion, so we'll see what he can do. Ricardo Scalette then into the finish. And he's already half a minute down of the pace of Kubert. But that, the moment, is good enough for fourth place. So back towards the start and Yanis Bonek again, another one who's had a pretty breakthrough season. Bronze medal at the World Middle Distance Champs and of course won that uh, middle distance in Czechia. I think you were laughing there, Jonas, at my me saying it was a pretty good breakthrough season. It was it was a pretty was amazing, I think. The, the breakthrough of the season. Yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, everything I said about Krivta with this breakthrough and uh, uh, I mean, the fact that we haven't seen him competing so many times in sprint competition when he actually is in very good form. Uh, I don't think that he had prepared so specifically for the sprint with Jessica Lipa. Now he definitely did it for the European Championship. So it's going to be very interesting to follow him as well. So let's take Krivta to the first TV split. That's a route we haven't seen so many times before. Definitely not the best one. You can see that he is not very well prepared for the tasks coming. So lost time there in the section when we followed him. And uh, we can see that Michel's 46 seconds behind. So not a good race for the sprint specialists from Belgium. You can just see the uh, officials trying to get people out of the way for Isaac von Krizenfuena, of course, previous world champion in this discipline back from 2021. What a great race from him that was, and a bit of a surprise result. He's had a fairly decent start. Very decent start. And a good route out to the next control as well. This is the control in the park, control number three. Yanis Bonek. Uh. Whoa, absolutely clattering down those stairs, but he's uh, wasn't quite exactly sure where that control was going to be. And I mean, the, the volunteer at that control could save himself quite a lot of work if he just keep all the tourists away from the control. Yeah. <laughs> I think the problem is there's an information board, like right next to the control. 
All right, and now we can have our first look at some of the GPS tracking here, especially for control number one. Yeah, it's a you little can bit see better it, I mean, to go the northern route. Yeah, but on the other on the other hand, you could continue in the same direction if you came from the, the other way. So I think in, in the end, it's it might be one or two seconds difference. You could see that it didn't really matter too much where you went. Uh, the most important thing is just that you don't hesitate and execute it in full speed. Uh, Emil Svensk, this control there, six seconds behind. That's the Fossa. Also interesting, he has struggled a lot uh, with injuries before the World Championships, of course, after as well. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how good, how well he can perform, especially in a race where the speed is so, so important. I think he would have definitely wished for a more technical sprint. Yeah, I think you're right, uh, but he's a man who knows how to get the best out of his body, whatever shape it when you tie when you actually come to the race and now we're we're rounding actually into the nearly to the top 10 competitors now by the qualification Mathieu Perrin yeah you can see there's like an information board right next to the control mm, quite a good start for Perrin Made a great start and equal third with Emil Svensk, who we just saw going into second place at control 14. Let's have a comparison then of the leader Kibbert and Svensk, who I was just mentioning there. Now, mm, Kibbert went routes. back. Yeah. yeah, that's the one we, we saw him in the picture there towards control 14 through the restaurant just before the control. This is Fabian Abersold. I uh, haven't seen him so many times in sprint internationally, uh, especially not in the World Cup. A uh, very fast runner, so this could suit him. But uh, yeah, not so, so experienced when it comes to the sprint, as I said. And that was a mistake, I think, because he should not have come from that right mm -hmm. direction. I'm pretty sure that was yeah. a mistake there from Fabian Abersold. I'm not sure what he did. Yeah, we have seen that a few times now from the runners. Axel Grankvist into fourth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think just looking on the tracking, Abersold went to the southeastern uh, archway and didn't go direct to the control. Will Casper Fossa do any better? You can just see how much he's trying to stop himself. The, the speed that he's carrying down those steps as well into the control. It's uh, really, really tricky. You have to really have be very, very agile going through there. This looks that much better start. from Fossa. That's what we're meant to do. Start. So, uh, new yeah, best indeed. time here. Soon we should have Emil Svensk to the finish as well. I think in about half a minute. This is Tino Pulsini to 16th. One minute behind uh, Pulsini, we had Svensk starting. Here we are. Here we can see him just now in the blue. Working hard all the way here. He's going to get some good cheers on from his teammates. But something has happened to Emil Svensk. As so often before. Yeah. A very good pace, had a very good race throughout many of the split times. We have seen that many times in championships races for Emil Svensk. 
and must have found a mistake somewhere throughout the course. This uh, very interesting name as well, Rolf Street won the, the sprint race in Ceska Lipa. August Mullain, again, nearly crashing into somebody. This is on his way to the 14th control. And maybe making this decision so you just don't have to stop at all at the control. The athletes know roughly how long it takes them to, to turn and punch a control and go back 180 degrees in the opposite That's direction. Jonathan Gustafsson, three seconds behind Fosser. Uh, so one second behind Kiburts. Into the finish, Michele Lejnik. Pole into sixth place. So those are the standings currently at the finish. And particularly, look out, there's quite a big gap between second and third at the moment. I think a few athletes could try and sneak their way into there. The runner in third position is a really big uh, surprise. Florian Attinger in his first ever international run for Switzerland. Actually, uh, have, you, have you prepared Florian Attinger? Have you did, uh, done some research on him? I've not, no. <laughs> I was you, such an outsider, did not think. You should, you should definitely do it because it's it's totally worth to go on his IOF Eventor page just to look at the picture he has uploaded. Uh, just <laughs> as a little tip for you all watching this race. I'll make sure I do it before the uh, the knockout. Thomas Kruvda, 12th place for him, shake of the head there. And back to the first TV split towards Andreas Bock Bjornsson and his only other world or European champs race was uh, two years ago in Neuchâtel. He was 95th in the sprint, so I think he's going to up that one by quite a bit. Uh, so some great progress from the Danish. He has a better, better result. Exactly. Um, and the Danes, uh, the Danes did really, really good in their qualifications. Um, I've got to say, uh, especially in the women, six out of eight of their women qualified for the final. Two of the six men that they fielded in the qualifiers made their way through to the final. Here's Casper Fosser, and he is on his way towards control 14. We can see that it still is a very tight battle between Casper Fosser and Matthias Kiburts. Uh, just at the pre-warning to the second TV control, the difference was two seconds. Uh, then in favor to Kibbutz. Now it still yeah. is. And I think this is Ralph Street, right? That's definitely the pause of Ralph Street. So you should come <laughs> through to the sixth control very soon. Frozen Ralph Street. Here he is. Here he is. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. did he fall? Oh. Um, it's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, we've got some sort of replay there. Anyway, he's punched the control. And he's into fifth place then. So four seconds down on that time. Casper Fosser currently leading at that point. Lots of orienteering still to go. And we're in towards the last three starters now. Yanis Bonek, though, let's take him to the finish. And again, kind of like he's going to be just slower than Krivda. The both of them making a breakthrough season, not quite transferring it to this sprint race here. And he lifts his speed over the line. But he will be outside the top 20 within a minute of the lead. Current leader still, Matthias Kibbert. We have everybody started. Now, Thomas Heikler was the last starter. Joey Hadorn won his heat. And Joey Hadorn. We know he's such a quick runner, but he often tends to show it the most in the forest on those hilly climbs. Can he transfer it through to this very, very fa flat and fast sprint race? And 19, nine seconds down at that point puts you 17th. That is how tight it is. 
Here's the last starter. Thomas Taikala. Quite a surprise mm -hmm. to win win his heat, but he was he was 25th at the World Champs sprint race. Mr. Finnish champion a few weeks ago. So in good sprint shape. This is Oscar Andrien, kind of a sprint specialist in the Swedish team. A uh, late bloomer as well. Uh. Yeah, it's actually his first time he's raced to the European Championships. You could hear that he did some of the shouting as well in order to get the tourists' attention. No one has done it as uh, clearly as Eight Smooth. So let's compare Kibbutz, Fosser and Svensk in this middle section. Different routes here by Kibbutz and Svensk compared to Fosser. So now it's very tight again <laughs> as it looks to the accent say at the pre-warning to the finish they have exactly mm. the same time wow so less than two minutes of running between that pre-finish uh, and the actual finish itself so very very tight between these two top athletes and we've still got lots more to come towards the finish like thomas hegler who I was going to say, has he gone? We don't have the time quite stopping for him there, but it looks no, like possibly waiting. quicker than Kappa Fosser. I think we're waiting for Fosser. That's so Fosser, Abisold, that's though, Abisold. Abisold. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fosser started one minute behind, so he has to show up within 20 seconds. Here, he, Here is. he is. Oh, it looks like he's hurting though. Casper Foster trying to get everything out here. And six seconds to make it to the finish. It's going to be super close here. It's... The drone tends to have a delay though, so I don't know what it's going to be. He's going to be late. He I is think... late. Oh. And it hasn't quite stopped behind? there, but I think it's probably seconds. Yeah, we have to wait and see for the results. Uh, lost time. Did it went on a different route compared to Kibbutz uh, to the 19th control? Might have been decisive. You can see it here. Yeah, you can see it was just a few seconds, maybe a few meters closer for Kibbutz. And back to Rolf Street. Yep, Ralph Street on his way to the 14th control. Still going and strong. Looks, yeah, and it looks equal to the time of Kibbutz. Goes in, it's equal to the time of Fossa then, two seconds down for the Brit. Yeah, good to see that he still uh, he could he managed to keep the shape he had just a few weeks ago in the Czech Republic his sprinting shape. Had quite a good race going on in the middle distance at the World Championships as well, but then red towards the wrong control. Axeli Ruohola from Finland on the way to the finish. Uh, not really in the fight for top 20. No, about a minute behind and Jonathan Gustafsson was the, the next starter after Ruohola. Here's Joey Hadorn though, just going in and out of these small streets. So tight. And this is the Kibbutz route. Mm, 214. It is indeed, but you can see he's already 20 seconds down. So it must have been some sort of mistake in there. For me, he's just not well prepared enough for that change of direction, I think, there either. That's also the advantage of going straight on through controls. You can kind of see your exit as well if you are 
well enough planned ahead. So not quite everybody through this point yet. We've still got Oscar Andrein and Thomas Hekela to go through. But here are the current standings, though, at split control number two, this 14th control in the middle of this square. Here's Oscar Andrein, very much sprint specialist. He was 11th uh, in Cheskalipa. But again, you can see more than 10 seconds behind. Just one more athlete now to make it through there. So Oscar Andrein into 13th. Very, very close races here. Timu Oxenen in towards the fifth. Bins again having qualified for this final. It's going to try and stay, I was going to say stay in the top 20, but not quite. Very interesting soon, Thomas Heikela. He had the fastest time at the first TV split. Should be here at the second TV split. Here he is, Ooh, just one second behind. And he went on a different route compared to most of the other runners to this 14th control. So now it's definitely a uh, Heikela street still out there. Yeah, uh, I think they're the threat, only you can, Yeah, I think they're the only ones who can make a dent on the medals at this point. And Drain is a bit too far behind, so is Joey Hadorn. And street should be uh, at the third last control pretty soon, so very soon to the finish. Here's Andreas Bok Bjornesson in first, though. And Just, uh, he's going to be about a minute, minute yeah. ahead of Street. So I think uh, won't be fast be enough for right Street, late. yeah. No, because he should be in now. He's going to take the lead. He's not going to take the lead, but he's just about to come across the line. What is it going to be for Ralph Street? He will be, I think, outside the top two into fourth, then seven seconds off the pace. So Ralph Street, the winner from Cheskalipa, into fourth place. Losing and a another few very seconds good, at the end. Very good race by Ralph Street. I mean, seven seconds is not a lot of time. <laughs> It's insanely close, this race. Very, very tight. As we'd expect with, you know, it's not by far the most technical race. A lot of it is gonna be won and lost on speed here. And also making sure you're not making any stupid mistakes I mean, as well. Hekela, you can see right close to the others. Could he snatch the win here? This is. Yeah, I mean, very, he very definitely can. He was, is very close to the finish, and uh, you can see he is very much up there. Uh, you can see that Kibbutz a little bit behind that, uh, Heikila a little bit behind at that point. This is Hadorn on the Hadorn? way to the finish. Hadorn into sixth, so a podium place at the moment, 22 seconds down, and a, I think a great like last few hundred meters really to pull some time back on the lead of Kibbutz there. Lost time in, in the middle of the race. And I mean, we have been talking about how close it is. We have more than 35 runners within a minute. That's a very tight race. So, Jerry Hadorn has finished. We've basically got one more athlete who can make an impact on this race. It is Thomas Hekela, the Finnish champion. First of all, we'll take Oscar Andrein in towards the last control and the finish as well. You can see these long, straight roads on these final stages of the race. Here's the last control for Oscar Andrein. And it's going to be around 10th place. There we go, called it. 
And with that, we know that uh, Heikila has 30 seconds to the finish. So very, very soon we'll have him here. So current one, two, three, Matthias Kibbert. Casper Foster, Martin Regborn. Will Thomas Heikela get into the mix? You can see Thierry Georgiou, the, the Finnish national coach. I don't think coach, he is going to win it. Him on and I don't think he's going to win it either. Where is it going to be though? Can he still get a medal though? Heikela, the time is running out for him. What's he going to do? It's going to go. Where is it gone? Because the tour has not stopped. We wait for the official time then because it did not come up automatically on the system. And we have also, we have to say that at the moment we have Rick Bonn and Street on a shared third position. I think I was just hearing um, Per Forsberg saying he's in fourth position. No, he is in third position, 12.31. Puts him in the bronze medal position and four seconds, five seconds, sorry, off the pace. What a very good race by Thomas Heikila. You mentioned it before, we haven't seen him in sprint so many times, but he has proven in, in Finland in at this Finnish championships that he is a very good sprinter. But to see him performing like this in a very physical race as well, where, I mean, this is really, if you mess it up at one control, just by a little hesitation, you're basically out from the fight for the medals. And to perform on such a consistent level uh, throughout the whole course, uh, even if it's, I mean, we have been talking about, uh, it's, it's not the most technical, it hasn't been the most technical sprint, but even more weight on all the routines you need as a sprint orienteer every single thing you've been training is very very important that you do it perfectly and i mean he's he's done that very good today and it's just four seconds away from the victory yeah and let's have a look then at some of the routes here and where it was kind of won and lost mm, and you can see that the different route choices we, we were talking about about it before i mean you can see that it, it was a bit quicker to go to the left to the first control on the other hand you had to turn then and uh, lost the maybe a second back due to that so it's it's all about getting as many good routes uh, as possible today it's it's the same as in every sprint but today it was even more uh, kind of important because I mean, it's so it was so so close, and uh, it was such a big part of the race was also the physical aspect. Uh, and then you can see, of course, when it comes to more or less the physical ability and executing the legs like this, uh, on maybe one or two different routes, then there's so many runners who can do that really really good. Here we had actually a few runners split. 14, that's what we call the kibbutz route throughout the course. We saw that he was not the only one going on that. Here you can also see these different symbols for the uh, places where you have many tourists, a bit more orange compared to the normal streets. And you see that so many runners still in contention for the victory at control 17. Then kibbutz here, I think a smart route out from control 18, put him into the pole position for these last controls. Then he has, I mean, he has such a great speed in the finish. Uh, once he sees the finish line in front of him, it's almost unstoppable. Yeah, really unstoppable. And it was a four second win for Kibbert in the end. Look how tight it was uh, across the top 10 as well. Three Swiss in the mix there, four Swedes, Norwegian, Finland and Great Britain represented as well in that final. And yeah, as you were saying, it's just about getting all those essential moments right. We did actually see uh, a fair few mistakes on camera there. And those are kind of mistakes that are so small, but are going to cost you those very yep. vital seconds. The thing is, uh, sometimes uh, we have seen a few hesitation when the runners come to the control and then they slow down because they're not 100% prepared and they have to make a, a turn and maybe lose two or three meters. In a, 
let's call it other or normal sprint race. It doesn't matter, but here it did. And I'm here with Matthias Kiburz, the new European champion in sprint. Matthias, tell us about your race and congratulations. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, it was a really fast course. Uh, uh, suddenly, oh, soon I realized it's uh, physically, it will be about physics as well. And yeah, I started quite early this time, so it was nerve-wracking now to wait in the finish because we saw it was such a close race and you know, maybe there I should have taken the left route choice or there maybe the right one. So uh, yeah, I was nerve-wracking till the end, but now I'm the happy winner. Yeah, that's great. And was it a faster course than you thought? Yes, kind of. I expected maybe a longer route choice with a lot of uh, forbidden areas, which should be more tricky. Um, but uh, yeah, it was really physically and left-right decisions, which you could see early, but it's hard to say which one is shorter. So it's not easy at the end, but uh, it was fast, that's for sure. And I think we can see there's a lot of tourists in the streets. How did that affect your race? Yeah, at the end, it, uh, it was okay. I expected it to be worse, to be honest. Uh, also, once I had to stop a bit and make a, a small detour, but I think that happened to everybody. And on the most crowded place, it was all under control. So I expected it to be worse. And at the end, I have to say, uh, it was, for my um, saying, quite also a fair race as I experienced it now. Yeah. And we can remember you won the middle distance on home soil in Switzerland some months ago in the forest. How has it been adjusting from Swiss mountains to, to going very fast in Italy right now? Yeah, it, for me it was going quite uh, smooth, as I have to say. Um, yeah, I changed my training again from hilly mountain runs to flat and fast city runs. And yeah, more on the track as well. But um, obviously it, it went quite well and I, I knew from a 5k test I'm in pretty good shape. So this of course gave self-confidence. And you also gain uh, 20 points in the overall World Cup standings on Kasper Fossa, the current leader. You are four seconds faster than him today. What does that mean to you uh, before the, the knockout sprint on Sunday? Yeah, it's good that I made this gap a bit smaller. So. Uh, Everybody knows how strong I am in knockout, so uh, I think he, he knows he has to battle hard. Uh, but yeah, we saw also in the qualification today, uh, it's already uh, tough to, to qualify. But uh, yeah, for me, it's motivating to, to go hard on Sunday again. We'll see how it goes. Thank you and congratulations, Matthias. Thank you. So Matthias Kibert is the new European champion and he's running with so much confidence. Uh, the Swiss uh, uh, national team do a 5K track time trial as part of their selections. Got good feedback from that. And, you know, he he's the defending European champion at knockout sprint. He's the f defending world champion at knockout sprint as well. So he's got loads of confidence going in yeah, towards I mean, the it, knockout. He, he, almost, he almost started kind of the trash talk there when he... <laughs> I mean, everyone, everyone knows how good I am in the knockouts, but yeah. that's definitely a, a, a warning in in uh, Fosse, into Foster's direction that he he's gonna go all in for this last race of the season. Then, yeah, it's um, he really really wants to uh, well he wants to beat this man at the in the World Cup standings. It looks like it's a bit of a, a two horse race at the moment between Casper Fosser and Matthias Kiberts to take the overall World Cup win decided um, on points based system on all of those individual races uh, this year. And that will all kind of come towards its conclusion when we hit the knockout sprint final on Sunday. And you see he's still got almost definitely another race before then if he gets you, you assume he's going to get selected for the, the sprint relay team uh on friday uh and there is a one rest day between each of the races so you'd expect him to be able to do that as well but we're gonna have a little uh flower ceremony now then to award the flowers to the top three have, as usual the full prize giving later on with prizes generally awarded to the top six and it's a fantastic backdrop of this Roman amphitheater, this incredibly historic city of Verona, where we've had the racing going on. So he was the Finnish sprint champion, Thomas Hekula kept everything right today. He was the last starter as well. So much pressure to go for that one. 
And Casper Fosser is always, he's standing right behind the wrong, <laughs> he's standing behind the wrong number. He's so used to being behind number one that he That's doesn't know where number two is. His with his answer on, on, on keyboard saying that he is the favorite for the knockout. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely Casper Fosse is going to disagree with that one as well. Um, and Fosse, again, great to see him get another medal uh, in another discipline yet again, uh, trying to peak whenever there is this these international races, World Cup races, World Cup points on the line. And Mattis Kibbutz, again, he's so not used to, he said he's so not used to starting that early, having that much of a nervous wait um, at the finish to see if it was going to be the win for him. Starting with number 28, his qualification didn't go quite as well. But it was a very, very smooth race for him. He could get the characteristics of the course very quickly. No real long legs, not as many barriers, maybe. Although well, there were barriers, but they didn't force a whole load of route choice, I think, those barriers. Uh, and it was mostly just kind of left or right. Sometimes when you have a sprint, you have maybe three routes. One of them is much worse, two of them are about the same. But lots of left or right route choices. Yeah, thank you the, the fact that we normally don't have a national anthem yes. the flower ceremony. I forgive you for talking over my national anthem here. <laughs> I am sorry, I was not expecting it um, at all. Because, yeah, we normally just award the flowers uh, and get on with the next part of the race. Uh, the national anthem is normally left to the uh, the big prize givings. But, um, so I do apologize for that and for all the Swiss fans watching as well. Um, but those are the standings in the World Cup then, as you can see, it really is a two horse race for the win. Uh, and Casper Fosser, Mattis Kibbert's there. And of course, Gustav Bergman won't have got any World Cup points in this race, having not qualified into the finals. So all to play for in terms of the top three as well. But we move on from this very fast and furious men's race towards the women's competition. And again, it was the the qualification this morning saw the top 15 from each heat make it into the final. So 45 women about to line up. One minute start intervals and just three kilometers here. Again, I expect it to go quicker than the estimated winning time from the organizers. And this is the course they're going to be faced with. Jonas, why don't you talk us through it? Mm, I mean, it's again quite a similar course as the men's course we've seen before. Uh, that means also, of course, that I, that I expect it to be very tight uh, here as well. Uh, see that it's kind of the same uh, route choice problem to the first control. You have this artificial barrier uh, on the way where you have to go either left or right. Uh, then the first TV control again at control six. So they come from this park like the men and then towards control six after those short and intense controls along the leg to seven. Uh, and then they have the map flip at control eight. Uh, 11, 12, that's the control where we have seen different routes executed in the men's race. If you're going to the right, if, uh, if you to the left, and then the, of course also here TV control at 12. 15, 16 and 17, kind of similar, 16, 17, we remember that kibbutz went a little bit differently. I think they had another control at 16, so I don't expect so many of the runners to go almost past the start there. And then 
the Finnish, though, 17, 18, 19, exactly the same. So it is a similar course. I think we can expect kind of a similar race as well. Um, it's going to be, as Matthias Kibut said, many left or right decisions. It's going to be a very physical race. Um, and you have to use those sprint routines you hopefully have trained up after the World Championships in the forest. So you can see it here. Many of these big buildings, typical for Italian cities. Not so many of these narrow passages as we have in other uh, kind of old towns in Central Europe, which make orienteering quite difficult. I think here it's really about this decision left or right and then executing it well. 6 7 here again, you have this um, very touristic route option when you go on the blue one so you have to spend more time on that one uh, a bit less if you go to the left then you can kind of just cut over it and then in yeah the you could choose you have... to avoid the uh market there that's out of bounds in the middle mm -hmm. and then you have to go and just round this artificial barrier halfway to control seven So that is how the terrain looks. And this is a start list then. So with the top 45 having qualified. Um, and Jonas, any names you want to pick out here of maybe people to look out for early on in this race? Mm -hmm. I mean, early on, I don't know if it's early on, but uh, start number 79, Tilda Östberg has been very strong in Sweden. Uh, won the silver medal at the Swedish Sprint Championship. So maybe the first one to highlight that Teresa Janusikova out quite early as well. Uh, towards the end then, of course, Elena Roos here uh, with start, just starting in the, about the middle and then Sarah Hockström, Simona Abersold, Tove Alexanderson, Megan Carter Davis. And in the sprint like this, when it's not too difficult, I would even call in, of course, now it's not a big surprise when she won the, the qualification, but Yves van Dongen, she can do, do really well in a sprint like this. Yeah, of course, she is a medalist from the World Champs Knockout Sprint, taking that bronze medal behind Tova Alexanderson and Megan Carter-Davis. So it be interesting to see exactly how she goes. And anybody, any surprises who didn't make qualification? Well, not really, not as in the men's race where we had kind of big favorites for medals, even with or possible medalists in other races with Tim Robertson and Gustav Berryman and so on. Um, I wouldn't say it has been one of the big favorites for the medals missing out on the final here. Uh, there are were quite big names as for example Evely Kasik who misses out on the final but not as in the men's race. No I agree I, I would add into the mix Anna Drickhorn who's often 
They've uh, done a great first leg for the Norwegian sprint relay team. Uh, it's been a house for it. Maybe not as much of a surprise, but she's got so much experience under her belt and she's announced that she will retire at the end of the season as well. So it's a, just a shame to see her not progress into the... Um, into the final and also uh, Britain Charlotte Ward in 17th place on heat three you know the fact that she's got medals at uh, you know got top 10 performances at World Cup level previously uh, I think and part of again medal winning relay team at the World Championship I know she's been struggling with injury that she, well, she went to Cheska Lipa she went to Assom as well wasn't able to run in either of those due to a, a recurring injury over this summer so that's certainly uh maybe impacted the reason why she didn't make it through to the final. But let's get back to the race. This is me and Nittinen. And that is control number three. Mm, and it's actually surprising. I, I mean, I did some research and I tried to find sprint results for me and Nittinen, but I had to go all the way back to 2017, uh, when I, uh, where I found the last international sprint for her. Uh, then in Grindelwald, finished 49th. So we, also here, she's already better now if she just makes it to the finish. Actually manages this really well here to go through the tourists. Yeah, she looked very agile through there. <laughs> You know, these these athletes are expecting this. Oh, not quite as smooth out of either of those controls. Mm -hmm. Back to the start to another Finn in a Mancala. Five of eight Finns qualified through to the final on the women's side. It'll be Kastner now, third starter, Austrian. And we wait for her at the sixth control. She goes through all these small passageways in these beautiful courtyards. This is the sixth. Back towards the third control. Mm -hmm. We can see the comparison between Martina Ruch and uh, Mia Nittinen. You can see that they split up here on different route choices. So the route that Ruch went was 424 meters. The other one was 40 meters shorter, the more direct one. But you also factor in changes of direction to that. It gets much more equal. Pack over. I think that was the runner we were waiting for, but just missed right. in the park before. It'd be good to find out how many uh, volunteers are out there on the course, just with almost the whole job of, of a, a warning tourists that people are coming. How many whistles they handed out yeah. to the volunteers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, now the camera operator pointing towards uh, Aino Menkele. Very 
well prepared for the next part of the control. Looks like she will go north of four. Looks like a very good start here for the Finn, I'd say, with the time being stopped at the next control. And indeed, going into the lead or equal lead with Kastner. Mia Nittenen, this is the Kibbutz route uh, through to control number 12, equal to Hanna Sudol from Poland. This is Martina Ruch on the way to the first TV control then, but first uh, to, towards control four right here. Bit lucky, no tourists at this spot. I think she's behind. Yep, so seven seconds is the gap in this very early stage. Hannah Hilo. Hannah Hilo made a great start if we look at the pre-warning. So we wait for her by control number six. Will she be able to take a new lead? This is very quick here. And at this stage, that is a big new lead. 12 seconds. Jana Pekarova. Well, she's kept pace pretty high into fourth place. Smoothly through there. Annabelle Dulen towards the second split, uh, still a junior. 20th at the Junior World Championships in sprint this year. feet for Maya Sienaya but yes yeah, she is not going to be close to the lead wait for her to come through these passageways Thank <laughs> you. 
And towards the finish then, Hannah Sudol was the first starter today. And 14 minutes exactly for Hannah is the first time we've got at the moment. So 14 minutes exactly. Here's Cecilia freeberg klusner Now one of the most experienced on the Danish team. Six of eight women on the Danish team qualified through to the final. A great record and kind of showing for me how much improvement they've made as a squad in the past few years. No Maya Alm again here, even though she was announcing her return to the national team. Mia in here. Exactly the same time as Sudol. I think you have to wait for the official time. Can differ one second in one or the other direction. We have seen that in the men's race. But uh, it seems as if she dropped a little bit towards the end compared to Sudol. And Hannah Hilo, 12 seconds gap at TV1. She's extended that to 19 seconds at TV2. Another Czech athlete, Jana Petrova. Checking her map as she go, went into the control. starts. Tilda Asbury, this is one of the ones you were kind of pointing us towards, it's one to watch out for, especially one of the early starters racing well in Sweden this year. Yeah, I mean, definitely a runner who can uh, both perform well technically, uh, but especially as well physically. Very strong runner, Tilda Asbury. And Maya Sienoya to split two. This gives us a bit more indication what those busier streets tend to look like. This is the Kivats route. And second place for Maya Sienoya. Back to start, ready for Maria Olausen. So far in her career, definitely uh, stronger in the forest disciplines compared to the sprint ones. Eno Mankala towards the finish now. That looks like a new leading time, it is indeed. Mm, you can also see that she was ahead of Annabelle Dullen, who took the lead in the meanwhile there. 
So, new leading time for Menkele ahead of Dulen. And this is Janosikova. Yeah, Janosikova now one of the more experienced athletes in the Czech team. She's a fantastic sprinter who's been really upping her forest game in the last few years, but she, her sprint class has been well proved before. So Hannah Hilo is really soon going to make her way towards the finish. Here's Pia Jungvik, Norwegian. She'll be looking ahead past those trees to find the gap between the buildings, underneath the buildings. Well, and very soon we should have Hilo. Here she is towards the finish. So we can see Hilo's time on the GPS. It looks good, and this will be a clear new leading time here. It's definitely going to be a new lead. It's hard to say if it was. <laughs> yeah, happiness I was say, it's hard or, to say if she's happy or annoyed. Yeah. Uh, Either way, it is a new leading time. 13 minutes and 26 seconds as Tilda Osprey goes through here. This is good. This looks very quick. Yeah, I'm very happy for that when I pushed her so much. <laughs> talking <laughs> about her before. She's really making that speed and that pace look incredibly easy. And it's going to be another big lead here for the Swede. 14 seconds. Laura Robertson, the Kiwi, based in the UK. Great to see her qualify and looks like she's putting together a pretty good performance here on this race as well yeah this is a great time for laura robertson rio lawson looking back over her shoulder maybe to look about where she has to go for the next control Maybe because there's a running camera operator on her shoulder. Oh, but this late, you could see that. Maya Zinaya here then to the finish. But I'm more interested in the runner who started one minute after her because Cecilia Fibro Klusner has been pulling up some places in the last part of this race and she looks like she could be in the contention for the lead so too was Sianoya into new lead three seconds so great last part of the race as well for her so actually, I think, I think some opportunity for some damage to be done on the last part of the race actually I think it's going to be quite tight between Sianoya uh, and Klusner but let's see the comparison here between Ostvari and Hilo so Ostvari lost time on this route choice to control seven very very interesting it's about to 13 to seconds look. ahead yeah this is close now Whoa, it's gonna be tight here should Let's be enough though this has done enough ah, fighting hard yeah, on these maybe. last stages it's gonna be very close well, she's been given it on our screen here exactly the same time as Maya Sinoya. Maybe losing a few seconds at the end, but a very good middle section of the race because she was, yeah, she was much further down. So we'll get confirmation of that time very soon. 
Let's head back out to the course. This is Paolo Gross towards control number four. Paula Gross into 11th and the whistle sound to warn people that she's on this her is, way. Here's Ven Laharyu. It's interesting. I think this is a very good time for Ven Laharyu. Great start for the Finn into this race. Again, I think Ven Laharyu most well known for her achievements in the forest, but really she's a fantastic all-rounder. I mean, she has a medal. Uh, from the World Championships in Sprint as well, even though it's 10 years ago. And definitely second place there. But we know that uh, Tilda Ostberg lost a lot of time on the route to Control 7. So it puts off the bit TV control. And Eleanor Ross next to head out into the terrain in her last international competition. She announced that she would retire at the end of the season. And Tilda Osbury, let's have a look at how much damage then has been done due to that route choice towards control number seven. I mean, she had such a good speed. Maybe she went back a little bit, but now you can see that she is now half a minute behind Hilo. There must have been something else go wrong there. Yeah, that's definitely. Because when but they were kind of at the same time at control seven, so she must have done another mistake from there. Such a shame because that was a fantastic start. But maybe just pushing it slightly too hard. This is like Maria Larson. Mm, yep. It looks better for her. Must be quite a good time here. She started one minute behind Laus, uh, Tila Sperry. Yeah, fourth, pretty good, pretty good split there for Olafsson. Ida Egevig Christensen, I think looking over her shoulder to spot control number five, it's a sensible thing to do. Because you can see it just as you enter that square. This is the control, just this is the camera just ahead of control number six. And I guess we want to be measuring people's times here now compared to Ben Lahayu because of Osbo's mistakes. And I think when we see people leave control six, you want to really see them turn left very soon, uh, as soon as they come out of that archway. Yana Shikova. Again, losing some mm -hmm. time here. Bit far behind. In MDP4, very good sprint athletes. Uh, especially remember, of course, the sprint relay in Cheska Lipa, where she had such a great race on her leg, on the last leg. This is Filipa but Rodriguez. Quite an interesting name, actually. She's a very fast runner. She struggled in the beginning of the course, but then had a very good middle section, and you can see it here. Actually, not too far behind the leader, Sianoya. Yeah, competing, fourth uh, place, nine in, seconds down, she should definitely take that. She's competing in leading the Lopa just a week ago, 30k, uh, finished 10th. It's a very big running competition in Sweden. So we're a very, very strong runner.
So Ven Lahayu second currently at the first TV split. What can she do here? There's Paula Gross just going through, I think. And Ven Lahayu, what's the gap going to be? This is looking really good for Ven Lahayu. Still fantastic. 16 seconds. Pia Youngvik will be fourth for her so far. So close to that lead from, of Maya Sienoya. And now we go back to Victoria Hester Bjornstad on her way to control number four. It's like a good route. If you look left just there, you can see the fifth control. And now we're into the top 20 runners. Back at the finish then. Mm, Matilda Östberg, but uh, more interesting, just behind her. I think we're going to see Mario Lausen very soon. But I'm not sure if she's going to be a threat for Sianoia. Yeah, such a shame for Tilda Östberg. After her great start, still leading early on. And Mario Lausen, oh, this could be close actually. I think she is one or two seconds behind. We've had those 10 yeah. seconds there at the last control. Oh, so close. She goes into equal third then. Remember, we've got Sienna and Klusner, I think, still sharing that lead. Now, here's one of the athletes I was mentioning earlier, Rita Maramorosi. Three J Walk dogs this year. So back to control number twelve, Eleanor Ross. She's such a powerful runner and just makes the speed look so so easy she's not as quick as how you and she's not too far off the pace 12 seconds behind into second position it's just outside the top three in Jessica Lipa in Czech Republic at the World Cup race but you see there, that point, considering uh, Maya Sianoya was in the lead, she was about 16 seconds down at that point. So there's everything you can do in these last few stages. There's places to be made up, I think, as Yanisikova comes into 10th place. And we head out to Ingrid Lindenez. But Ingrid Lundin is already behind at this control. We don't get the actual split time until the control after this one. Now, Ven Lahayu, what will her time be? 
how much of a gap can she make on the rest of the field? I think that's the question. Like the oh, big one. Was, yeah, she was a little bit ahead. Had a bit of a bigger gap compared to Sino uh, at the pre-warning. But now 14 seconds ahead. So Ben Lahayu into a new leading time by just 14 seconds. And I think she's going to have a nervous wait to see how many people will go past that, if any. So Victoria Hester Bjornstad. We've got some of the big hitters still to start, though. We've, and the SMO has been out for two and a half minutes. We've got, of course, Sarah Hagström, Simona Abersold, Hannah Lundberg, Tova Alexanderson, Natalia Gempela, Megan Carter Davis, Eve Van Dongen. All of those big hitters still to come, still to start this race. Here's one of them, Sarah Hagström. Made a great start to the season at the World Cup in Norway. Again, a fairly consistent performer. Not quite at the same heights at the World Championships. Here's Emma Biesmo. Raced very well at the Assom Sprint Meeting in Belgium. have a look how her time will compare then as we wait next to the sixth control no this looks like alexandra hornick who was going fast and picking up places picking up time compared to the leaders compared to ven lahayu for biesmo it's seventh Mm. Quite soon, we're going to have Elena Roos to the finish as well. Named it before, El uh, when Laharju lost a bit of time from the pre-morning uh, to the finish. So it's going to be tight and it looks good for Elena Roos. It looks great for Elena Roos. This should be, I think, a new leading time here. She's got it right all the way to the end and that's where it counts. Elena Ross goes into new lead by six seconds. So, what a great feeling for her to hear on her last ever individual sprint race. I mean, and, we, uh, we know that uh, Ben Lahario lost a little bit of time there, and we also know that I only also saw that uh, Rose went on another route to come to 17. Uh, maybe there where she made the difference. Abersold just starting her race. She already has one European title under her belt. Wow, Sarah Hagstrom almost looks like she's going to go flying there. But manages to stay upright. And this is a very good start. Yeah, I mean, we, this is, we see that still Tila Ostbari in the lead here. If you compare her to Elena Rose in the finish, then it's quite, it's almost about around 20 seconds. Very aggressive start from Sarah Hagström. Here's Sandra Grosberger, the Latvian. And equal time there to Hornick. So again, we know, they're going, but crucially, they've gone ahead of Elena Ross, who's the current leader at the finish. So the potential for those two to set new leading times. Victoria Marg to Jaywalk medals this year. 10th in the sprint race in Cheskalipa.
looking very smooth then, Victoria Marg, and in third. Back at the start, Hannah Lundberg next off. Young Swedish talent, very tall runner. Very good in all sorts of disciplines. Such a dominant performer as a junior and has managed to transition into the senior ranks very, very smoothly. Simona Abbasold then, what can she do? One of the favorites, of course, in any race she starts. And mm, very, how has she managed to fare? Very interesting to follow her start here compared to Sada Hockstrom. So now we really have the big favorites for today out. Uh, Waiting for Tuve Alexanderson, of course. Uh, but a good start for Abersolz. Five seconds behind Hagström. Will she be someone who wished for a bit more of a technical race, do you think? I mean, she's such a strong runner as well. I don't think it matters too much for her. Uh, I think especially we should take Hornick who... to finish, I think, because Hornick <laughs> is going to set a new leading time. This is another huge one here, and the pole has had an amazing race here. She was ahead of Ellen Ross at the second TV split, and I think she's built on that. 15 seconds is the lead, and Alexander Hornick from Poland is the new leader. I can see Hanna Lundberg uh, a little bit behind Akström and also Abersold, but still within 10 seconds. So uh, back to the question before. I think it's it's for runners who are very good technically, but maybe struggled a little bit physically, it would be better with a more technical race. But uh, I mean, those runners we're talking about now, they're very good technically and physically. So it, I don't think for them it matters too much. The only thing is that there are more other runners getting into the fight for a very good position here. Uh, so they are not allowed to do any mistake at all. I think that's the difference. But if they get through without any problems, they're still uh, ahead of the others. Speaking of ahead of the others, Sara Hagström is extending her lead. 20 seconds now ahead of Ven Lahayu. And Harley, of course, making mistakes towards the end as well. She's gone quickest there at control number 12. Natalia Gempeler now racing in Swiss colours, former Russian athlete. Again, such a great performance in Cheska Lipa as well in that sprint race. One who seems to transition between the two styles very, very easily. Ingrid Lindenez here. Outside the top 10. And we're looking for Sandra Grosberger. There she is, because she had exactly the same time as Alexandra Hornick at TV2. So what has she been able to do compared to Hornick? No, she's already late. Will she go into second place, though? Could be tight between her and Elena Ross. So it's going to I mean, be she's second best time. Another threat for Hornick into second here. But uh, if you look at her season, she really made a step towards the top position uh, this year. That's my feeling. You could feel that she gets closer and closer. And uh, now definitely one of the, yeah, maybe top 10 orienteers in the world. So let's take Simona Abbasold to split control number two. Number... 12 and this is the kibbutz route just dodging the tourists here rounding all these corners trying not to drop too much speed it's the acceleration and braking that you have to practice so much when you're a runner like this and either keep it really really good and let's have a look abasold same time then as hagstrom That's Elena Gempela. And let's see what she's able to do. As she comes through towards control number six. Just 
which will be more than 20 seconds down. And the second to last starter today, Yves Van Dongen. She's such a quick runner. Third at the World Champs knockout. Has lots of potential. Here's Emma Biesmo, who's going to be just late here. Might go slower than Grossberger as well. It's going to be between her and Elena Ross. So crossing the line into fourth then. 16 seconds slower. Here's Tova Alexanderson. Mm, small hesitation there. You can see yes. seven seconds behind Parkström. But there are a few kind of simpler, longer legs in the second half of the course where I'd expect Alexanderson to do really, really well and pull back those seconds. Natalia Gempeler. On her way to the fourth control. Mm, I think she's Just a little bit behind. Mm. I think so too. Now Sada Hagström, what can she do? Look at that oh, time gap. It's the huge. new leader. Here's a massive lead here for Sada Hagström. Let's have a look at the time then. She crosses 12 minutes and 17 seconds for Sada Hagström. Now it's a nervous wait to see who can match that because she is still leading there. You can see ahead of Gempler by 21 seconds. Mm, I mean, as far as we can see, it was quite a clean race. Maybe the first one that was clean throughout the whole course. Uh, so very good position for ha Sara Hagström. Uh, but she has to do a very good performance today if she wants to stay in the fight for the overall World Cup. Uh, because the gap between her and Tove Alexanderson 70 points. So here is Megan Carter Davis, Sprint World Champion. There you see are why. some. Yes, she's two seconds down, and she's kind of. She spoke about this actually after her win at the World Championships, how she was just taking care to make sure she got exactly the right route choices. It paid off for her there. I'm wondering whether it will do again here. But let's focus in on this battle between Hogstrom and Abersold because they were very close together. But this looks like it's going to be a clear lead here for what did uh, say? Where's, where's the battle there? It's quite a yeah, clear lead. Yeah, I thought there was going to be a battle. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so too when I looked at the split yeah. lines. So uh, not quite everybody through Abisold split one. Mm. I lost about 18 seconds uh, between TV2 and the pre morning. And Yves Van Dongen, no, she is going to be behind because we don't get the split time for another couple of controls. So we thought this one might suit somebody like Yves Van Dongen, but she's going to be quite a bit behind already. Here's Abasol then. On the way to the last control, but as we said, she lost about yeah. 20 seconds in between. And now she's too far away. Not going to be a threat for Hagström, but I think she's going to make it into second position just ahead of Alexandra Hornick. Yes, she'll be gutted knowing she was neck and neck with Hagström, but it is a second place for Swiss, for Abersold. Here's Alexanderson. Very familiar figure. And is this going to be a new leading time? It is going to be a new lead here. I'm pretty sure of it. Oh, she's been given a oh, note. She's not been given a time there. I think it was a new leading time. I just sure have to wait for the confirmation. This is Alba Sunesson on the way to the first split, on the way to control four.
and Sonnison um, she rated up by the world champs or European champs level though she did take 13th place in the sprint in Chascalipa but maybe pressure of being the last starter a lot on those shoulders Hannah Lundberry see she's going to be outside the top three you can see where that time was lost if you see between control six and ten so we'll be equal fourth then with Sandra Grossberger and we don't have many runners left out there only eight runners started after Hannah Lundberg So standings then at the finish, a big lead at the moment for Sara Hagström. Will it be enough for her to take a win, take a medal even back to Megan Carter Davis? I was saying there were some question marks about her fitness. Um, she was selected subject to fitness, I think a, a niggling injury this summer, but she is fit enough to run and she actually took a bit of a break after those world championships <laughs> didn't go to czechia That's wanted to make a good call. transition there a uh, few seconds behind hogstrom and abisold you can see that we still haven't got the punch here for alexander son uh, so it didn't work at this control but i'm sure we're gonna get one at the pre-warning then So here we have it on the screen, and you can see it's still a very close call between Sara Hagström and Tove Alexanderson. So in about two minutes, I would say, uh, we're going to have Alexanderson to the finish. Oh, and I was wondering where Megan Carter Davis was going after out of control 12, and she's just gone out and back in that uh, the alleyway. Uh, so and then to go underneath the archway towards the yeah. market. So that was a mistake from Carter take. Davis. Now we got the punch there. We can see that the pre -warning, at the pre-warning to Alex Amazon was three seconds behind Sara Hagstra. So Ethan Dungen more than 30 seconds down. We saw Megan Carter Davis run towards the camera and that's where she made a mistake going into an alleyway that's just to the left of where the camera is now. Had to come straight back out and then underneath that arch that you can see in the distance. Now I think so I think we're, we're looking for Alexanderson. Yeah. Yes, but that's not Alexanderson. Alina Gempler. It? It's Alina Gempler, I think. Yeah, it's the white top mm -hmm. of the... And here is Alexanderson. Ah, that's... Mm, hope it's not decisive to go on the wrong way of this barrier. Let's look at the time. Oh, she's she's going to be late. It's too late. Not going to be a win today for Alexanderson. Crossing the line into second place. Eight seconds down. So Hogstrom. And she would have been, she's overtaken Alina Gempeler. It's more than a minute down. So we've only got four athletes left. And I think Sara Hogstrom. That might be the new yeah. European champion. I think it's like, highly likely to be, especially with that mistake, I think, from Carter Davies. So no title. For Tova Alexanderson, she wants to get out there as quickly as possible. Here's Alva Sonneson. I mean, I mean, honestly, if we look out on the course, we still have uh, Natalia Gempele, Megan Carter Davies, Ivan Dongen, and uh, Alva Sonneson. But I can't really see anyone, uh, especially uh, as you mentioned after the mistake by Megan Carter Davies. Um, well, maybe Natalia Gempele, but I mean, she was half a minute behind. She won't uh, mm. turn that one around. 
No, no. she won't. Definitely not. She's already late here. And now she's battling for the, the third place is Natalia Gempela. She's not going to be quicker than Abersold. So Natalia Gempela into fourth best time and the chances of Hagstrom's win get even stronger. There's nobody who can match her now. We've had the pre-warning from Megan Carter-Davis. I think we better hand the European title to Sara Hagstrom. And she can't uh, believe it. But as you said, for the last, she doesn't want to celebrate yet. I think. <laughs> I mean, when we look through the course, uh, we had mistakes by almost everyone uh, at one point on on a route choice or at the control out from a control as Megan Cart Davis, except for Sarah Hodgson. We didn't see anything. And if you look at her splits, I mean, she was in the lead at almost every split time here. So very, very consistent race for her. The only one performing almost perfectly today. This is Carter Davis at control 18. So on the way to the last control. Yeah, working hard, but you know about that mistake. So, tears, I think, for yeah. Sarah Hagstrom. It's her first ever individual uh, European or world title, and that's why it means so much for her. Carter Davis, it'd be interesting to see how much time she lost on that mistake, but she will be gutted knowing it. She threw it away again on a silly mistake like that. Let's have this is how it was. You see, she was already behind Alexanderson and Hagstrom. But look, that was you, the mistake. But you can see that Alexanderson at this point was uh, ahead of Hagstrom still. And I mean, especially after the World Championships, when you where you. I mean, we had her on the list of the top favorites for a medal. Oh, well, there uh, we go. That was a mistake. A mistake. Yeah. We had her on the list for. Uh, maybe the, one of the biggest for a medal, and she didn't get those good runs she had in the beginning of the season. Was very disappointed after the long distance. Uh, had a brutal start into the middle distance. Uh, really didn't get those individual races she wanted. And well, for her, it will be a very big relief to now get this title here today. Yeah, you could see just how much it meant. For her, as we see, uh, Ifan Dongun. I mean, it's it's at this line. time we're in now. We have this big, big name. I mean, we have Tuve Alexanderson, who's most probably gonna win the ninth consecutive world, overall World Cup in her like career. And then we mm. have uh, Simona Abrisold. We have Natalie. There's so many big, big names, and to be able to win a championship gold medal. Even though those big names are still around, that's yeah. I mean, that's really good. <laughs> it's really exceptional. And especially when there's there's so many big teams here, and you you the chance of an outsider, a very very quick youngster, taking a title. You know that that can happen in races like this, where so much of it is down to the speed and the pace and everything as well. Too. The fact that we've got Sara Hagstrom, Tova Alexanderson, and Simone Abersold still in the top three here shows how exceptional all three of them are. Mm, definitely. And we can see the last starter in towards the finish. It is Alva Sonneson. Not her day to day after winning her qualifier. She got the great or perhaps maybe daunting job of being the last starter ultimately over a minute and a half off the lead here but that is our last finisher into joint 37th place and so did you know we were talking at the beginning of the broadcast about the characteristics of this terrain these kind of wide slightly wider streets the this the old buildings combination of grid-like system and some alleyways as well did these races kind of go as, as you expected them well very much i mean it's uh, especially the men's race when it was so tight in the women's race 
I mean, if you look at the result, it, Liz, you mentioned that before, Hagström, Alexanderson, Abersol, Gempele, maybe Hornick then the first, kind of surprise, but we have those very big names in the top, and it's just, they are so strong physically, it's very hard to beat them if they're not doing big mistakes, and, well, today we didn't really have the race where you could do this where we could see one of the big favorites making a mistake that big that she would be out of the fight for a medal. So I think it's it was a very typical race. Also I had Kibbutz saying it was a very much a left-right kind of competition. So once you had been taking your decision left or right, it's it was about just executing it and, and pushing as fast as possible, as much as possible. And... Well, Hockstrom did that very well because, of course, even if you only have two decisions, possible decisions, like left or right, you still have to take <laughs> the best one at every control. <laughs> and even if it's only two or three seconds in the difference, it means that, yeah, if you take the wrong one once, it doesn't matter. But if you take it five, six, seven times, then we're still up on half a minute. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely it's, it's, it's it was the race I expected. Um, you could have worked as a course course planner if you would have wanted it. If you would have wanted to make it more difficult, you could have built a bit more artificial barriers, and then it would have been a different race. But well, they wanted to have a tight race, obviously, and uh, <laughs> they managed to do so. So it's it's all about what you want uh, as a course planner. But we have seen that the, like kind of the direction. Uh, recent courses went towards was more that it was that they tried to have it very difficult and to make it very hard to keep in the fight towards uh, all the way towards the last control and today I got the feeling that they wanted to have a high speed race um, with many runners in the fight for the medals and well if that was the goal then they managed very well yeah, they really did. Those are the top 10. Again, you can see five Swedes in the mix, three Swiss as well. And we look further down the start list. We have a load of Finns, a load of Norwegians. Expect all of those nations that I've mentioned to be strong contenders for the sprint relay on Friday. We've also got the uh, World Cup standings in. And that second place for Tova Alexanderson means she is 110 points clear of Sada Hagström. European champion, congratulations on this first big championship title. How does that feel? Uh, it feels amazing. I, I'm, uh, I'm quite shocked actually because uh, I didn't have uh, really the best uh, preparations for this. Of course, I've been happy this period. I get, got married uh, three weeks ago, so it was uh, a bit unusual uh, upload for this championship. But yeah, I knew I have uh, done a lot of sprint work last year and it paid off. <laughs> And how was your race in the streets of Verona? Uh, it was uh, good, but not perfect. I, I did some small mistakes at the map flip, but I thought my first part was really good. I had the push and uh, I read uh, forward a lot uh, because I thought it was quite easy. So, uh, yeah, I tried to uh, keep, uh, keep forward, uh, but also be really... Uh, um, really uh, keen to not do any uh, like uh, mistakes due to uh, stress or so <laughs> and you had some minutes here waiting for Tova Alexanderson to come in you beat her by eight seconds how was it to wait uh, and, and watch her r run into the second place I'm so used to get beaten by her so, uh, so I was just waiting for her uh, to finish the line before me and I would be really happy to uh, to get the medal but uh, to get a gold medal as first uh, individual medal that's uh, that's really cool and uh, yeah I'm so happy and I know she's She's in really good shape now, and that means I'm in good shape, so I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, this is the second time this season that you've beaten Tova as well in the World Cup in Norway. What's the recipe? I think people would like to know, how do you beat Tova Alexanderson? A lot of uh, gelato in Italy. <laughs> and uh, the rest of the week, there's a sprint relay in two days and uh, a Nogat sprint on, on Sunday. What are your thoughts? Are you making room for more medals in the suitcase? Uh, I thought my shape wasn't good enough for the sprint relay. We haven't selected a team, but now I guess... Uh, 
I will be in the team. I don't know yet, but I hope. So I know that there we have a good chance for, for medal too. But uh, yeah, I, li I like the sprint orienteering here, so I look forward to uh, good uh, orienteering races. I, I think the organizers have done a really great job to fix this uh, sprint in this cool city. So I'm really looking forward to the week. Good luck with the rest of the week and congratulations again. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Sada Hogstrom absolutely over the moon there. Her first ever European title individually. Uh, she has won European and World Champs golds in the relays before. This is her first ever individual title. You can see how much it meant for her, especially she didn't have a whole load of confidence about her shape either. So it's a really fast and furious one, especially for Simona Abersold, who taking yet another medal at this level. Tova Alexanderson then ultimately into second place. And I think that means, well, yeah. we always, we yeah. always name Sweden and Switzerland as favorites for the, for the, um, for the sprint relay. It just cements that, doesn't it? Yeah, and it means something else as well. I mean, now her lead in the overall World Cup is 110 points with 100 points per victory. Uh, well, she gets this ninth consecutive overall World Cup victory. Uh, so that should be clear now, if my calculation is right, at least. Yeah, I've I've got the the same two, and yeah, it's, I I mean it's like how many is she going to win in her career? It's it's incredible. <laughs> I I don't know what the the record is for the most World Cup. I think Cup, it is nine. I think it's a shared a shared nine. nine. Yeah, I think Simone uh, uh, Nickley has nine as well. So I think it's it's a shared. One, I'm not hundred percent sure about that, uh, but nine is definitely no one has more than nine. Well, she's been at the top of world-class orienteering for so long. Let me just see if I can double check the overall World Cup overall Simona Nigli nine times between 2002 and 2013. So they now share that. Accolade, number of World Cup overall titles, another bronze medal for Simona Abbasov, another medal on the world stage. Tova Alexanderson, second place for her, and <laughs> she still can't believe that. <laughs> Look, she's still got her, she's still got her SI, she's still got her control description holder on and everything, and uh, your your life. Life changes when you are a European champion as well. It's pretty incredible for her. And, you know, talking about how she got married this summer. Uh, so it's been a pretty dream summer for her, especially after not quite the world champs she wanted. Small pre-warning now, Catherine. It's going to be the national anthem yes. very soon. Okay, I better shut up. Well, I cut that one. They cut that one slightly short, but it was the <laughs> Swedish did, national definitely. anthem for uh, Sara Hagström to round off that flower ceremony today. Well, two fast and furious races, very, very tight races today with Sara Hagström 
and Matthias Kubert taking the titles there. That's a confirmation of the World Cup standings. And with 100 points for a victory, Tova Alexanderson has taken the overall World Cup title for 2023, her ninth World Cup overall title. Incredible stuff. It's still to play for, for the the positions following Tova Alexanderson. So that'll all go down to the knockout sprint on Sunday. Before that, though, we've got the sprint relay in and amongst the streets here in northern Italy. That is going to be on Friday afternoon. Only one team per nation at this time. So it's going to be very interesting to see those selections come out and be interesting to see who takes that European title again. Will it be Sweden? Will it be Switzerland? Will it be one of the other nations as well? It's been a very picturesque sprint race here. It's been very fast and it's been very furious. And we will be back on Friday with that sprint relay. See you on Friday. Thank you.